Hi there, my name is Anthony Sesnick, and I will be presenting how to use Proteoform Suite. So this is software that we've written to analyze intact mass spectrometry data to identify and quantify proteoforms, and then visualize those results in proteoform families. Um, so this is software that we've been working on at the University of Wisconsin-Madison uh, and Lloyd Smith's research group. And yeah, so let's get into it. So first, this is our Proteoform Suite website, uh, and there's a placeholder for this video here. Um, so you can find the release and uh, a vignette that I'll go through at this link. So let's click this link and go there. Um, so this, this is the release here. Uh, this is 2.7, so this is the latest release so far. And then this is the vignette. So um, this contains all of the input files and presets necessary to run this analysis. All right, so let's download this uh, pretty from suite folder to the desktop, and we'll also do the same for the vignette. All right, so um, so yeah, once we crack these open, uh, you'll need to extract them. So extract all. And uh, you can just extract that quickly. Uh, and then the vignette folder is a little bit larger, so I'm going to uh, pause while we extract this one. So yeah, click extract and that'll go ahead. All right, so we fast forwarded through time there and now that has been extracted. Uh, all right, so now we can crack open Proteform Suite. Um, this is uh, this is the Proteform Suite folder. So I've so we've ex extracted this zip file um, to this folder, and I open this folder. Uh, so these DLLs are libraries of of code that we use in Proteform Suite, um, and here you can find the uh, ex executable file. So if you double click this. It'll bring up this scary window uh, that tells you that it's unrecognized. Uh, this is because we don't know how to sign our software yet, so we're, we're working on that. We don't quite know how to do it yet. So it says we're an unknown publisher, uh, but trust us. Uh, that's all we can ask, I guess, at this point. <laughs> Thanks. Um, all right, so run anyway, and here we go. So this is Proteform Suite. Uh, this is, uh, so now you can see that there's this identification results frame there's a quantification results frame, and then there's a protein databases and PTM list frame. Now down below there are some options for doing, uh, for for uh, running through the processing of the of the data. So um, so let's first get in these uh, results files and protein databases. All right, so we can back out here to the vignette. All right, so so these so this vignette has uh, a few types of files. There are identification files um, that contain uh, intact masses and intensities uh, measured for those intact masses. So in here we have uh, two bioreps of normal yeast uh, analyzed by intact mass spectrometry, and then we have stressed yeast uh, with two bioreps. Uh, so we can drop those in, and um, so you can just drag and drop them, and it'll populate the list with all the identification files. Uh, next, we have quantification files. So we did three biological replicates of a one-to-one -one mixture of normal and stressed yeast. In each of these folders, you can see that we split those uh, bio biological replicates into fractions. We use gel-free to fractionate them. And then uh, we split, we injected those into the mass spectrometer twice each. All right, so there's that. Let's drop that into the quantification files. And so you can see that populated that. All right, and now we have protein databases. So if you open this up, you can see that there's a, there's a uniformatted database. We can just look at that quick. Um, and so this is built with the, the package called mzlib. That's openly that's open source and available uh, from our lab, and so it contains modification entries up top so that those are portable. Um, and then down below, it has um, Uniprot 
protein entries uh, in XML format. All right, so let's drop uh, these databases in. There's also a, a custom modification uh, list for addicts that we'd like to include. We'd like to identify those addicts and the proteoforms they're adducted to. All right, so we drop that in. All right, so now uh, <laughs> we have to, this would be a long process, but we have presets to make it quicker. Uh, so I'll just go through it uh, a couple steps at a time, or for, for just three files. Uh, all right, so uh, so for these quantification files, we should label them with biological replicates and fraction and technical replicates. And this helps us do statistics later on, on these quantification results. So for these first three, uh, the biological replicate we've labeled here is A. So we'll do A, A, A. And then fraction 366, so we can do that, 366. And technical replicate 112, so we'll type those in. And then uh, now um, we would also want to label the conditions. So, um, so in uh, in fraction A, the the light condition I believe is normal, and in fraction A, the heavy condition was stress. So we'll label those. Uh, sorry, I the way that I did that is I can you can right click and replace multiple. Uh, cells um, with, a, with a certain string. So that's how I did that. All right. So we, <laughs> uh, I got fed up with filling those all in every time. And uh, so I made a, a presets file. So we can load in those presets and it'll fill in all of those, um, all of these frames, so all these cells. Uh, so it asks you if you want to fill in the uh, files that are listed in the presets folder this file and uh, if you save this from a previous run then you'd click yes and it would speed up everything you wouldn't even have to drop them in uh, but in this case you're just starting fresh so just click no um, all right so now you can see that it loaded in all of these uh, all of all of these entries and now we can move on to processing so so there are two options for processing these results you can either use the results uh, menu to step through the process step yeah step through the process or you can click this full run button so right now we're just going to click the full run button and I'll go through those uh, results pages uh, after it's done so we already loaded presets I'm going to click no and then let's not save to this location just yet all right so now it's running and it'll take about five minutes um, this is an eight core computer so I guess it might take less or more depending on what type of computer you have. Um, so I'll click pause and we'll come back when it's done. After the full run, uh, when we get back, uh, it'll, you'll see this pop up uh, and it'll tell you that it ran successfully. Uh, in this case, it took about five minutes. Um, this is an eight core machine. Yeah, I said that I think before. Um, so it might take more or less depending on what type of machine you have. Um, so we'll click OK, and we can look through the results menu to see what the results of this analysis are. Um, all right, so right now we're in the load deconvolution results frame uh, or page. And uh, so next we'll step into raw experimental components. So on this page, uh, we have on the left, we have the list of files that went into this. Uh, on the right, we have all of the uh, masses measured and intensities for those masses. And when we click on one of these, you can see the, the different charge states for that mass measurement with the intensity of that charge state. Um, you can also click here to uh, find, the find the mass and intensity measurements for um, quantification. All right, uh, so then we pair so for, for identifying proteiforms, we pair uh, masses with uh, a 2 to 1 new code labeled ratio um, by design. And so you can see that uh, these are the new code pairs and uh, the, the peak intensity ratio is just about 2. Um, yeah. 
So then once we've done that, we aggregate these uh, observations because these are effectively proteiform observations. Um, we aggregate these into uh, what we think or what we predict to be unique unique entities. Um, and in this case, we're calling them experimental proteiforms or aggregated proteiforms some, in some places in this software. So, uh, so yeah, this is the list of experimental proteiforms. Um, there are 2,000 of them or so. Um, and when we click on one of them, we can see all of the components that uh, went into that uh, experimental proteiform identification. On the left here, we can choose what, what type of component to display for that experimental proteiform. So we can choose to display the ones that went into identification or the ones from the quantification experiment, either light or heavy. Uh, yeah, and then next, uh, we we also loaded in a, a Unipro protein database with um, PTMs attached in the XML format. Uh, and so each of those, we can, we can bin it, from each of those, we can binatorially gen generate uh, a number of theoretical proteiforms. Um, so this is that, that list of about 48,000 theoretical proteiforms generated from that database. And below we have um, a list of of modifications, all of the modifications that were in that database uh, and in databases that we loaded um, in addition, if we did. And uh, then we can nickname them under this new ID column uh, and um, tell the software how many PTMs they represent, which helps us in our heuristics. Um, and you can also uh, assign a rank. And so a low rank means that it's less likely to occur on a on a proteiform uh, and a high rank, so uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, uh, a low a low rank in this case, uh, yeah, a low rank means it's very likely, I guess. So that um, that would be one. <laughs> one is very likely. Uh, Thirty is not likely. So you can you can adjust um, those if you need. All right. So then we compare experimental masses to theoretical masses um, to get. Uh, all sorts of mass differences um, that may be characteristic of known PTMs. And so you can see here that we have a uh, peak mass difference of 42 um, that might be assigned to acetylation. And you can find that peak here. If you click on this histogram, you can get the, the numbers to show up. Uh, we do that again for experimental, exp for comparing experimental masses to other experimental masses. Uh, and then uh, we join all of those relations to form proteiform families. And so this is where it starts to get more exciting. Um, we have, we form about 298 proteiform families, uh, and I'll show in a different video how we construct uh, those in Cytoscape to visualize these results. Um, then lastly, we use those proteiform families um, and the quantification results to do statistics uh, and um, go term analysis. Um, so you can see here, these are the, this is the intensity distribution for quantified proteiforms. Um, and this is the result, this is the permutation analysis result. Um, and then up here we have log pole changes as well, um, where the yellow ones were significant, uh, called by permutation analysis or by a fold change greater than four and at least two biological replicates. Um, on the right here we have go analysis. And so you can either choose to use the quantified sample set as uh, quantified proteiforms as the background set for go analysis, or you can choose, uh, in this case, um, we'll, I'll show you how to use a custom protein list. So this protein list uh, is actually, are the proteins that were identified in the bottom-up experiment, uh, and you can load these in as a background for the go analysis. Uh, lastly, uh, we have the results summary. So here we have all the results that we've gone through so far. And we can save them to a folder of our choice. So I'll choose the vignette folder. And we can click Save All. And it'll take a few seconds. And now it's done. So we can take a look. And now all of these, there are lots of results that I'll talk about in other videos. Um, otherwise, thank you for listening. Uh, feel free to post any issues on our GitHub um, under the Issues panel, which is located here. And um, 
we hope you enjoy using our software.